Well, Jesus arrives on the scene as well. And the anticipation is over, and Jesus begins to do exactly uh, what Isaiah prophesied he would do. But there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, he's not the Messiah we were expecting. Where's the big horse? Where's, the, where's that big, sharp, shiny sword? Where are the armies? But he's going to do exactly what Isaiah said he would do. The anticipation is over. And I'm going to read from you from Isaiah chapter 53. And listen to these words. These words, were, this letter was written 740 years before Jesus arrives on the scene. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him in no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement, the punishment that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before it shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and yet they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge, by his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. And that's what Jesus did. That's what he did. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement and the punishment that brought us peace. That's why we light the peace candle today. He brought us peace, and with his stripes, we are healed. Faith and Joshua are here now, and all I can do is to continue to anticipate the lives, the way their lives will play out. Jesus has arrived and he's done everything Isaiah said he would do, except for just a few things. From Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah said that there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. You ever been in the forest? Big old tall timber, pine, redwood or something, and then boom, it's on its side. And all that's left is just this stump. And so it was the rule of David, King David, strong, tall, timber. And in the succeeding generations, that had fallen over. The family of Jesse, David's father, the family of Jesse had taken a fall. And all that was left was a stump. But out of that stump, out of the Davidic line, out of that family would rise a shoot. And from that shoot, there would be much fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
And when, Isaiah, and when Jesus first started his ministry, he goes into the synagogue and he opens up the scroll of Isaiah and he reads this passage. And he rolls it back up and he says, I'm here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm here to preach good news to the poor and I'm ready to go. No one else believed him. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the bread of his lips. And, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the young, young goat. And the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, in that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. In that day, the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that remains of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar and from Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. He will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the banished of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. I have faith in Joshua. They're here today. A lot of things are, great things are going on. There will be the great anticipation that we'll look forward to seeing how life plays out down the road. But for Jesus, he's done a lot of what Isaiah has said. He's borne our iniquities. We're healed by his stripes. It's because of his death on the cross that he gives us peace, that peace that passes all understanding. And yet, there's still something that we wait for. The day when the lion and the lamb shall lie down together. When the left and the right will come together in the middle and be united and be together. That's the day we look forward to. Between now and that day, as Isaiah says. And until that day arrives, we will live and we will wait with the great anticipation. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is with great anticipation that we look forward to seeing you at work in our own lives, in our world, in our church, in our family. Thank you for that which you have already done, that you've already made the greatest sacrifice of all. Out of great love for each of us, you sacrificed your own life so that we would have new life and eternal life with you. So as we move closer and closer to Christmas Day, we've heard the announcement. We wait with great anticipation. For it's into your son's name that we pray.